Let's go to the UK now. Now, this is Omid Scobie's Hatefield Royal Expose, so-called Expose Endgame. Now, the fallout from that continues. There's been more allegations, including now that the late Queen Elizabeth's been dragged into. Now, according to Scobie, the Queen had offered Meghan Markle her Ghanaian-born equerry to help adjust to royal living and learn her royal duties. I mean, this stuff really is pretty turgid. Multiple royal commentators, including Scobie himself, have now accused the royals of, quote, having very little racial diversity. Joining me live from London, we speak to her on a regular basis to discuss is writer and broadcaster Esther Kraku. Esther, great to see you. Is anyone taking this book seriously? Uh, clearly not. I mean, the, the British public want to hear from Omid Scobie as much as we would like about a gonorrhea. Um, and he himself has proven <laughs> that he is very inconsistent uh, with the stories that he's, he's been telling. So apparently he has admitted that the wrong copy of the book somehow made its way to the publishers. But the only thing that was wrong with that copy was the fact that there was apparently the revelation of the names of the royal racists, which now apparently the Queen has, has, has joined that club. It seems like there's more people in the royal family that's allegedly racist than are not. Um, but obviously, if we, if we were to take this story at face value, it actually shows that the royal family are very much not racist. So the, the Queen offered her, her Ghanaian-born um, equerry of mixed racial heritage um, to Meghan to offer his, his services to her to help her adjust to royal life. I really don't understand how anyone could take offence to that um, unless, like I've been arguing, from the beginning, the, the Sussexes really treated the royal family and any advances that they made towards them with extremely bad faith. Um, but again, this is assuming that we take anything that's coming out of Omid Scobie's mouth seriously. I do, I do still think it's very strange that the Sussexes have not made any public statement uh, about this book, denouncing it in any way, shape, or form. Um, maybe they they think it's this is the time to hold a dignified silence after having Netflix documentaries and Oprah interviews and and tell all books um, released. But I just think it's very strange and very damaging and very unfortunate. What has uh, Esther been the, the, the wider British public reaction? I mean, we know what the media reaction's been. We've heard, you know, people like Piers Morgan slam this bloke. But what's the what's the wider public view of this been? Well, mainly one of bewilderment that Omid Scobie has even managed to drum up publicity in the way that he has. You have to remember that this is someone who's reported on the royal family for over two decades, but he was very much an outsider amongst uh, royal uh, journalists, commentators, and people really within in the know. Um, and somehow he has this proximity to the Sussexes, and he seemingly knows everything that's gone on in the palace, even though we don't know any of his sources, and we don't know whether anything that's coming out of his mouth is, is based in, in reality. So most people are, are just bewildered by the fact that we've even heard of this person's name and obviously they don't really believe anything that he said i mean piers morgan um publicly denounced one of the, the blatant lies he told in his book that he took three phone calls with queen camilla even though queen camilla doesn't take phone calls at least of all from piers morgan because um it's yeah, just I, not the done thing so most people are not taking it seriously i reckon uh, yeah i reckon you can uh, probably throw that book on the scrap heap esther sorry it was so quick for us tonight but we'll catch up again next week